morning we're going to continue and you know I don't think there could have been a better series for us than the one God is giving us to close this year keep the faith keep your faith that's all that will matter soon that's all that will matter soon praise the Lord well this morning we're going to go straight into what God has in store for us and I want to encourage you to not be distracted you know those up going and down if you are watching at home please make sure that you're not watching while going to the kitchen moving around all of that steals the word of God from you if you are watching in the church and you know it's like a stream site please avoid distraction and don't allow the fact that you are watching me on TV to make you think that this is less of importance than me standing before you every movie you've watched you watch it on TV and it affected you are you listening to me most of the things that have affected your life are things you watched are not things that were actually there physically many games of soccer you were not in the stadium but it affected you so I believe that this word can also affect your life, even though you are watching me on the screen. So please, do not, do not devalue the word of God just because you are watching me on the screen. All of this is God's avenues for us to read. I mean, we've been able to read so many people during this pandemic that I could have... There are many of you who know me. I don't, I don't, I don't know you personally. That is because of the power of technology. Please believe that the same way you watch a movie from Hollywood and you enjoy it, even though you've never been there to see how we're doing it. Also believe that as you are watching this morning, if you happen to be watching me, believe that this is heavenly wood. It will have an effect on your spirit. Hollywood has an effect on your soul and your body. Heavenly wood will have an effect on your spirit. In the name of Jesus. Put your hands together for the Lord. Back to our foundational scripture this morning. We're going to go straight into it. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. This is my prayer. I don't want to fight and not finish my race. I want to fight a good fight. Hallelujah. And I pray the same for you. And you know, the first day of this series, I, I remove you out of any wrong fight, any bad fight. There are good fights and there are bad fights. Bad fights deflate you. You lose money. You lose energy. You lose, you lose anointing. You lose everything. You don't get, you get nothing out of it. A good fight, it might be hard, but at the end of the fight, you'll be promoted. Something great will, will be added to your life. A good fight is fighting sin, fighting fornication, fighting all these temptations that are coming your way all the time. That's a good fight. Fighting to stay in the faith. That's a good fight. But fighting to get what your sister, that, your sister is wearing next to you right now, that's not a good fight. That's not a good fight. Fighting to be seen and to be appraised and to be approved, that's not a good fight. Rather fight to be seen by God. Hallelujah. I finish the race. I have kept the faith. Yes. I pray you and I will keep the faith. Oh, I want to see you one day in heaven. Amen. And I want to say, wow, sister, you made it. Amen. You kept the faith. Oh, I want to look at you, my brother, and I want to say, wow, you fought the good fight. You finished your race. You kept the faith. When we'll be walking on those streets of gold, oh, my God, I'll be coming to visit your mansion, and you'll be coming to visit my mansion. We'll be having private dinners with angels that took care of us while we're on earth. And it will be so wonderful. It will be so wonderful. Listen to me. What we are doing now, you might not fully understand, but it is for something greater and nicer. Please don't devalue it. Don't think it is of less value. It is an unspiritual person that does not value spiritual things. A natural man does not understand the things of it. He cannot even, he cannot even receive them. You are not a natural man. Oh, yes. So when I talk like this, people are like, ah, listen, I believe in these things. I believe, I've read my Bible and I know heaven is nicer than earth. I'm here on an assignment. When my days are done, I'm going back home. Hallelujah. And I want to say like Paul, I have fought the good fight. I have 
finished the race. I have kept the faith. Amen? For the past two Sundays, I've been showing you what can cause a person to not keep the faith, to not even finish the race. The first week, I gave you about 10 things or seven, I can't remember, difficulties, you know, all those things. Last week, I took you through other things. I think last week I gave you seven. Yeah, that can cause a good Christian like you. I know you have no plan of backsliding. But see, these messages will help you one day. And by the way, all that I'm teaching you is from my father and the Lord, Bishop Dakiwad Mills. He has a book called Backsliding. I've been, I've been taking a lot from that book to teach to you during this series. That book has helped me. Hallelujah. I recommend that book to you. If you don't have that book, ask one of your shepherds to give it to you. When you read the book, you'll see some of the things that I've been sharing, they are from that book. Hallelujah. May God bless you richly. Hallelujah. This morning, I want to read something before we continue. Please come with me to the book of Revelation, chapter 3. I'm going to read from verse 14 down to verse 22. It's a bit of a long reading, but I think this is what the whole thing is all about. And to the, church, and to the angel of the church of the Laodicean, of the Laodicean write... These things say the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, and neither cold or hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Please say with me, God forbid. That shall never be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. But now look at what he says next. This is where God ministered to me. He said, because, you see, the reason why you are lukewarm, the reason why things are the way they are in your life, you are neither this side or this side. There's a reason. He says, because you say, I am rich. Have come wealthy and have need of nothing. In other words, you have gotten to a complacent state. You are very satisfied. You are rich. Everything is okay. And I have need of nothing. Which explains the reason why you are not engaging much. He's, he's telling this church. But look at the, 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 you know, the controversy. And you do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Wow. This is the person who says, I am rich. I have become wealthy. I have need of nothing. Yet, God says, you do not know. Tell your neighbor, you might not know. You might not know something. You might not know. You do not know, right? You do not know that you are, number one, wretched, miserable, poor. The, the God says he's rich. That heaven says you are poor. Blind. The God says, I can see heaven says, no, you can't see nothing. And you are naked. A lot of us wear nice clothes, just like I'm wearing this morning. And you look so good here. But heaven looks at you naked. There's no, there's, there's, no, there's no clothing on you. What does that mean? Naked means you are exposed. You are exposed. And nakedness also connotes shame. It connotes shame. Praise the Lord. Look at what he tells us. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed and that your sh the shame of your nakedness may be 
not, may not be revealed. Hallelujah. You see, I told you that nakedness connotes shame. The shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. You see, when you dream in the night and you see yourself naked in the dream, what does that mean? It means Satan is planning something to shame you. Usually. Something is coming that is going to be shameful, that you're not going to be happy about, that is going to demean you, you know, distort your image, affect you somehow. It's going to shame you. So sometimes if you dream, you are naked in the dream. Other God is showing you are exposed. There's no covering. The word of God is not in you. Or Satan is planning an attack on you. Are you with me? And it says, and anoint your eyes with ourselves that you may see. Hallelujah. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. You see, God is saying, you see, when, when you listen to this, you'll be like, ah, why is God speaking like this to these churches? Because I love them. God speaks in a certain way because he loves. It's out of love. Praise God. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. So Jesus is saying, I'm ready to start a relationship with you again. I'm ready for us to start the journey again. I'm knocking at your door. I'm ready to come in and for us to start the journey. Hallelujah. And I pray that by the end of this message, many of us will open the door for Jesus. Hallelujah. And he ended up by saying, to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. As I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Hallelujah. He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This one I want to say, he will hear here. Let him hear what the Spirit says to a live Bible church. Because here it was to the churches. But today we know the churches. Hallelujah. So you can really say, a live Bible church. God is saying to us, let us go to him. Amen. Don't think that you see, he said, because you said I am rich, but you do not know you are poor. Say with me, deception. Deception, mm. deception is behind most of the challenges that the church is going through today. People are just deceived. They are not aware of the truth. Amen? Now, because it's easy for us to be deceived into thinking we are something that we are not, very easy to be deceived. It is easy to be deceived into thinking you are doing well. Meanwhile, in the spirit, they say you are not doing so well. How many of you sometimes, you've had, you've had a very nice day and you felt like, mama, things are really moving. And then you had a dream and in the dream, you see yourself in a very bad state. Or the dream, you are being fought like it's contrary to what you saw during the day. Because usually, your physical reality is not what is going on in the spirit. Are you listening to me? So this morning, I'm going to talk about signs of backsliding. Signs of backsliding. You know, I've been telling you about the causes, things that can make people backslide. But how do you know that you have started backsliding? What are the signs? It's possible to be like this Laodicean church. You think, you say, I'm rich. But you are poor. Because you don't know the signs. And another person looks at you and he says something. You look at yourself, you don't see that thing. We use signs in medicine to identify things that are not easily identifiable. We also, we also call them symptoms. You see, when you are sick in your body, you don't always know that you are sick. Are you listening to me? Or you might not know what sickness is in you. But there are signs and symptoms that we can look at. Are you listening? And those signs, God gave us that gift of signs. They, are, they help you recognize something deeper inside the person. 
Even with this COVID, there are four major signs that if you have them, they tell you it's not just flu, it's COVID. Tell your neighbor, get COVID, get COVID, COVID. You, don't, you, you see, you see it's, it, you, the, the signs might be similar to the other ones, but these ones, there are other things there. Get COVID. Hallelujah. Mm. So we use signs. We don't use dreams, we use signs. A doctor does not use magic. He looks at the signs. When you do this, you do this. He asks you a question. You answer, he asks, he answer, he asks, and then he tells you, okay, this is the problem. He doesn't need to open you up. The signs open you up. And those who have listened to the doctor when the doctor prescribed medication, not because he opened you up, simply by signs, those people did well. But a person will listen to a doctor. The doctor say, you know, I think this is what is going on with it. Ah, how sure are you? Yeah, I don't believe I have this thing you are talking about. You can't just hear, ask me two questions and you then decide to say, I have this. Okay. You go on. Then things get spoiled. This morning, let's look at signs. You see, when somebody starts backsliding, they're usually not aware they have started backsliding. You can be backsliding and not be aware, just like the Laudation Church. But if the Laudation Church can look at the sign this morning, amen, you can begin to ask yourself, am I still in the faith? Have I kept the faith? Am I still running? Are you listening to me? So I'm going to give you a few signs this week. And by God's grace, next Sunday, I will give you more signs. Hallelujah. By God's grace. Amen. When you are driving somewhere, you never, and you don't know where you are going, what do you look for? Signs. Yeah. Sometimes it is a sign that tells you you have arrived where you are going. Because you might not even know you have arrived. That's why sometimes people pass the place they are going to. I mean, they pass it because they didn't see the sign. Then they have to reverse. They passed the address they were going to because they did not see the sign. And unfortunately, some people have crossed a sign that was, at, you know, a warning them of a, an impending danger. They did not see the sign and they fell in the trap. Are you listening to me? I told you on the first that there are no signs telling you hell in 300 meters. Uh, backsliding in 200 meters. You, you don't have those signs. Like there's nothing like that. On, that. You have to learn to look at now. We need to check our lives, check experience, check what has happened to other people, and then start putting together some signs. Just like doctors didn't know in the beginning that this means, this means, this means is flu. This means, this means, this means mean tuberculosis. But with people falling into the same type of categories, they have now combined and compiled signs and they have put them in books. Are you listening to me? So today, we can just look at one, two, three, and we know it is this. One, two, three, four, and we know it is that. Same in the Christianity. Now, let's quickly look this morning at some signs of backsliding. What is the first sign that somebody is starting backsliding? Number one, no more going to church regularly. It is always the first sign. <laughs> it starts there. <laughs> Listen, no more, no more, I'm not saying you're not going, but no more going regularly. Habitually, oftenly, continuously is the first sign you are on your way to backsliding. <laughs> it is the number one sign when somebody starts backsliding. Uh, based on experience, I've been the pastor for about 10 years. Based on my little experience, based on what I've watched, based on what I've listened to. When a person starts backsliding, the first sign to you. This person is on the way down. They are no more coming to church regularly. Psalm 122 verse 1. I was glad. When they said to me, let us go to the pub. No. 
When they said to me, let us go to the mall. No. I was glad. I was excited. I was elated. I was delighted. I was expectant when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Listen to me. When that excitement is down, you are no more excited about the house of God, you see. It's a, it's a, it's a burden to go there. It's a struggle to go there. We have to drag you there like a goat. We have to go fetch you from your house. You are no more excited, you see. You have lost something, and that is the first sign. I was glad when they said to me, let us go. I couldn't wait to go. How many of you remember those days you couldn't wait to go somewhere? You wake up, check the day, if it's already sunshine, hey, you check the watch. Are you like that type of church again these days? You know, that is how it should be. When it's no more like that, something has started happening to you. Acts 2, 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. They continued in fellowship. Now that we're coming together, when you are no more continuing in coming together in fellowship, something is wrong because you are not doing what the first, the, the first believers were doing. They continued. You, you have discontinued. You see? Number three. Hebrews 10.25. Let us not neglect our meeting together. I like that word, neglect. Neglect. Because many times, it is exactly that. You are now neglecting church attendance. You are now neglecting the meeting together because you have become so familiar, you think you know what will be said there, you know what will happen there, so there's nothing new there. I don't need to go there. I'll go when there is a guest speaker. Let us not neglect. I come against every spirit of neglect that has come on you. That has come on you to make you not value the house of God anymore. He says, let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do. Some people are doing it. They are neglecting the house of God. They are neglecting going to church. I mean, since the pandemic, even though the president has said let the churches are open, people don't want to go. They don't want to go. They are having pajama services in their houses. Pyjama, pyjama uh, worship services. Let us not neglect. Because that is how backsliding starts. Yeah. Lastly, Psalm, 1, Psalm 84, verse 7. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. Why must you not neglect? Why? Because you go from strength to strength. You go from strength to strength. Every time you go to God's house, new strength comes to you. Every time you appear before God in Zion, you see, you will receive strength for your spirit. You might not know this, but that is what the Bible is telling you and me. That's why David was happy when he is told, let's go to the house of God because he's going to receive strength. And that's why people who don't go to church regularly start backsliding, they run out of strength. They become deflated. The challenges of life start pulling them down. When you come to the house of God, you receive strength in your spirit, you know. You receive strength in your soul. And when you get out of there, you can say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. A manager is being rude on you. A colleague is being nasty to you. But you have received the strength on Sunday morning. And you can face them. But when Sunday morning, you are sleeping in your house. You didn't go to church. Come Monday, you are deflated. No oil to fight. They'll go from strength to strength. Brothers and sisters, there's nothing God has asked us to do that has no purpose. Including coming together as believers. The Bible says how good and pleasant it is when brethren comes together in unity. There, God releases a blessing. A blessing. You are missing out on some blessings when you stay at home. 
When you go other places than going to church, when you find excuses to not come to church, you are even now making excuses. You are no more finding excuses. You are making excuses now. You are making excuses why you're not going to church. But you don't know that's the first sign of backsliding. People who backslide usually start like that. Uh-huh. Thomas started missing meetings and then he could not believe certain things anymore. Judas started missing meetings before you realized he was in other meetings discussing other things. While these people are having the Holy Communion, Judas is having other meetings. This is the funny part about it is that as you are not coming to church, you will go somewhere else. This is what Satan always does. You know, you can never be neutral. He will find you something to do. He will find you something to do. May this be restored. May this sign not fulfill itself in your life. And those of us that you can already see, they say, I told you last week, don't try to explain yourself. Just adapt. And, and you adjust yourself. Not, don't say, no, 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 me. I think the reason why I don't go to church is because, 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 because. Listen to me. Whatever you want to do, you can do. You know yourself. If you want to be at church on Sunday morning, you will be there. You will make a way. The reason why you are not there is because you don't want to be there. It's not because of this, that. No, 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 no. It's because somehow in your heart, there is no more that joy to go to the house of God. You are no more glad for Sunday morning. I really love Sunday mornings. Do you still love Sunday mornings? Hmm? I really love Sunday mornings. A lot of you now, you like Friday evenings. Yeah. You like Monday morning. You are back to work. You enjoy working. But Sunday morning, you are depressed. Something is wrong. Something is wrong in the heart. Receive change in the name of Jesus. Number two, take on sign. Take on sign. You are no more interested in the word of God. No more interested in the word of God. First Peter chapter 2 verse 2. As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Desire the pure milk, the pure milk, the pure milk of the word. Desire the pure milk as newborn babies, as babies. You know, before God, you will always be a child. Yes. I will always be a child before God. I can never become too big for God. I will always be a child of God. Yeah. Yeah. And as a child of God, I will always need the word of God. Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. What is the place of the word in your life currently? Check it. What is the place of the word in your life? You know, it will be easy that you will agree with me. Some of us, you go for months without intentionally going in the word of God. The only time you hear a scripture is when pastor is preaching. The only time you hear a scripture is when pastor is preaching or when you are watching Christian television. If you even watch Christian television in the first place. Hmm? No more interested or excited about the word of God. This is a sign that you are alive. A baby that doesn't eat milk, that baby is in trouble. That baby will not grow. That baby will possibly die if God doesn't help. Hmm? What is the place of the word of God in your life right now? I'm talking about the scriptures. God's word. God's word. Is the word of God a final authority in your life still? Or your own personal opinion is your final authority now? Like, what is ruling your life? Is your life ruled by the word? Or by your own opinions? What what has taken control of you? 
I want you to think about it. The decisions you are currently making, are they scriptural? Can you back them up with scriptures? Can you say to me, Pastor, I did this because yesterday I was having my quiet time and God spoke to me about this, so I did this. Now, where are you getting the inspirations for your decisions? What guides you? Is it the word? The psalmist says, your word is a light unto my path and a lamp unto my feet. In other words, I don't take a step without your word. Your word helps me take steps. Now, of late, what is helping you take steps? Of late. What is guiding your steps? Proverbs tells you, don't trust in your own understanding. What is guiding your steps? If by past the word that God gave her, believe her own reasoning, look at where we ended. She knew the word of God, but she did not allow the word of God to be the final authority over her life. The word of God says, do not eat. She brought her reasoning. She looked at the person, no, it is, not, it is okay. I mean, I can have this. She nullified the word of God in her life. And look at where we ended today. What is the final authority? You know what is the, the final authority means when the word of God comes in the picture, all argument cease. Whatever I was arguing with you about, once you show me the word of God and I see what God says, even though it means I was wrong with my argument, the argument stops there. But when I look at the word and I still argue the word, something is wrong with me. Something has gone wrong with me. Hmm. Psalm 119 verse 9. How can a young man stay in the path of purity? By living according to your word. Young people, the only security that you have for you to not fall in this generation that is going down, for you to not find yourself where everybody is going, and don't tell me it cannot happen to you. You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised by what can happen to you. You will see yourself do things you never thought in your wallet that you can do. Unless you cause the word of God to lead you. And he says in verse 11, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. The only thing that will keep you from sinning is to hide God's word in your heart. And how do you have God's word in your heart? Is by meditating the word on a daily basis. Spending time in the word. Listening to the word. Allowing the word to enter you. It is that word that will rise up on the day of battle and save your life. 1 John chapter 2 verse 14. I have written to you, fathers, because you know him who has been from the beginning. I have written to you, young men. Why? Because you are strong and the word of God remains in you and you have overcome the evil one. You see, it keeps taking you back to the word. And at ABC, we are all young. Either young at heart or young physically. We are all young. There is no older person at ABC. Even an 80-year-old person is still a young person. Because Methuselah was 969 years. If you are 80 years old, what do you mean? You are a baby. You are a baby. You are a baby. You are a baby. You are either young at heart or you are young in your mind. Hallelujah. Or in your body. And we all need the word. We all need God's word. I'm asking you, where is your Bible? Where is your Bible? Do you even have a Bible? Kola Manama. You have, you even bought new pairs of shoes this month. You bought new clothes. You bought, a, you, you upgraded your cell phone. Can you show me your Bible? Where is the word? Where is the Bible? Where is the Bible? He, said, he, he says, you say I am rich. You don't know you are poor. You don't know that you are poor. Mm. 
as you are getting back in the word of God. Brothers and sisters, our security is found nowhere else but in God's word. Nowhere else. Will, if you don't build your life with the word of God, you are building your life on rubbles. The Bible says God's word is the rock and the wise man who hears the word and fulfill what it says is a wise person who builds his house on the rock. On the rock. Anywhere else you are building, you are building on sand. It will disappear just now. It will disappear just now. It's not based on the word. It's not founded on your word. I'm asking you, your decisions of every day, can you show me the scriptures you are running with? Those behaviors you are busy with in the, in the house, those things you are doing in the church, can you show me the verses that are supporting you? And these are people that have been moving around behaving as if they are powerful Christians. Yet, yet, yet empty. Yet shallow. Find us moving as if we know the whole world. And we have the word of God nowhere in us. Nowhere in us. No way in us. And we, we, in fact, we have stopped valuing the word of God. We even hate the word of God. You know, there are some believers that don't, they don't even love the word of God. And the first time I heard a pastor say, I don't love the word of God, I was very surprised. I was very surprised. But you see, when you start doing ministry, you realize at some point that if you are not careful, the word of God becomes just a tool of work. I use it to preach messages. But I don't love it. It doesn't affect me. It's only to preach. After preaching, it's over. Just like, do you, if you're a taxi man, do you think you love your taxi? You don't love your taxi. You know, in the first few weeks, you love the taxi. After a while, you look at that taxi, you are depressed. The only reason you are going back to that taxi is because you need the money. If you are honest, if you are a teacher, do you really think you love the chalk and the blackboard? You don't love those things. You love them the first week. After that week, you, they love it. When you see a white chalk, you start having palpitations. You start having diarrhea. And you use any excuse to not touch a white chalk today. That's why many, many, many teachers are happy now since the 15th. Everything is now closed down. They can now relax. Yeah. They are happy. They are happy. Come and see them rejoice. If the principals could see their, their, their teachers, they are now enjoying life. It is the same thing with pastors. When a pastor does not take the word of God for something for himself, it is a tool of work. So when he opens the Bible, it's for counseling, it's for preaching, it's for funerals, it's for weddings. Not for himself. And that's how we start backsliding. Because you, you are not allowing the word to work in you, how can the word work through you? How can the word work through you? This is a sign. Listen to me. You might not know you are on the fast track to backsliding, but the signs will tell you you are 300 meters from Johannesburg. You are 200 meters from Johannesburg. Now, these are signs. You are 300 meters from backsliding. You are 200, <laughs> you are 200 meters from backsliding. They are telling you on the way. Listen. This thing that is going on like this, if you continue... If you don't take an offering, I see you taking an offering on your left and reversing. You are reversing. You are, you are taking an offering and you are saying, I'm turning back. I'm turning back. Hey! I'm turning back. I'm turning back. You know, I work in a hotel. A couple of weeks ago, a lady comes to me with a tablet. And she says to me, sir, where is this place? I say, ma'am, when you look yourself, it says breasts. She says, but where is here? I said, ma'am, now, here, you are in Sun City. Where you are going is breast. And it's almost 11 o'clock at night. How come you kept on driving? Eh? The thing is saying to you, you are not going where you're supposed to go. You continue, you insist. 
Now you are in Sun City almost 11 o'clock at night and you are supposed to be in bread. And you are asking me, sir, where, where is this place? You see the things we go, we go through in this life. One day you find yourself in a place and say, where am I? How? What is going on? But you've been on the way and the signs are showing you. Sign number three. Sign number three. Let's go. Sign number three. Sign number three. Sign number three. No more listening to your pastor's messages. Oh, yes. No, it's different from the word of God. The word of God is the word of God. Uh, the word of God can come in different forms from different people. But Jeremiah 3.15 I will give you I will give you you, you, you. Tell your neighbor where now. You, you, you. God is saying you, you. Uh -huh. I will give you shepherds or pastors according to my heart. They will feed you, 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 you with knowledge and understanding. There is a certain knowledge only this pastor can give you. There is a certain understanding only this pastor can give you. If, if, listen, listen. If you go to another pastor, he will give you knowledge, but it will not be that knowledge that God wants you to have. You will have knowledge, but you might not have the knowledge that you need. That's why God gives you a certain shepherd a certain pastor to give you the knowledge you need. A science teacher needs a certain knowledge. A history teacher needs a different kind of knowledge. If a science teacher says, I don't like my science, I mean, it is, I mean a science student. A science student needs a certain knowledge. A, a history student needs a certain knowledge. Imagine a history student says, I don't like my history teacher. I'm done with him. I like things the way on the science, the science, uh, I like the way the science teacher dresses. I like the way the science teacher talks. He talks with style. So I'm going to attend lectures there for history. You are lost. You are shallow. You are deceived. You are empty. What else? Huh? No, it was just last week. You already forgot the seven signs. You see, it was just last week. You are already forgetting them. Amen. Amen. I will give you, 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 shepherds. And Jesus came to tell us, I am the good shepherd. John 10, 27, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. My sheep listen. Listen. Listen to me. Hearing and listening are not the same thing. Right now, you are hearing me. You are hearing me. You are not yet listening to me. Listening is another art. It's not the same as hearing. Sunday morning you hear the preacher. Listening takes time. You soak. He says, my sheep listen. They don't hear. They listen to my voice. So now he's introducing something. The voice. The voice of the shepherd, the voice. Because what you will hear behind you is a voice. Go this way. Go this way. When you've listened to your shepherd enough, oh, you start hearing his voice. I, I, I'm a very good witness of this. I'm running ministry as if I have somebody behind me saying to me, do this, do this, do this, do this. I'm always listening to my shepherd. Always listening to my father. So every time a challenge comes, it's like I hear him say, don't do that, do this. And you literally start hearing a voice. Yeah. 
you start hearing the voice of your shepherd. One day I went to dedicate a house. That was the first time to encounter the voice of my shepherd. I was in a very difficult position health-wise. I couldn't perform my duties. Immediately I got there. The voice of my shepherd came. Do this. I just started following. Following. That was my first time to hear that voice behind me. My sheep listen to my voice. Mark 12, 37. David himself calls him Lord. So in which sense is he his son? And the large crowd enjoyed listening to him. Enjoyed. Not enjoyed. That listening to your pastor is, you are, you are enjoying it. For the sake of reports. For the sake of people more, are going to ask me, did you listen to the message? They, they, no, listen. They enjoy it. Listen. I enjoy listening to my pastor. I enjoy. I, 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 that's why I can listen to him throughout. Oh, no, a lot of you, my only opponent with you Sunday morning. For one hour. What does that mean? You don't enjoy the voice of your shepherd. You don't enjoy his voice. You enjoy other voices. And you know, he talks about it in the same John 10. He says, after he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him. Why? Because they know his voice. You see, you can never follow your pastor well if you don't know the voice of your pastor. You cannot follow him well. You see, following and the voice are very connected. Very much connected. As a matter of fact, if you are not listening to my voice constantly, you are not following me. You are not following me. You, you can't follow a person, you see, because following has got to do with making decisions on a daily basis. But when you are already following a voice, that voice comes and assists you now in your decision making. And you start doing things that look like your father. Because he's assisting you with his voice. You are hearing him all the time. They won't follow a stranger, Jesus says. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. They don't know his voice. They don't know his voice. Those of you that follow anybody that just come from nowhere, you are already there. YouTube, Facebook, everything, you are there. The church, YouTube has been there. You don't even visit it. My podcasts are there. You don't listen to them. When I come to your Facebook page, I don't see anything connected to this church, to me as a person. You are totally disconnected. Totally. Ah, you are on the third side. God has given you a shepherd and you have chosen one for yourself. Acts 2.42, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. They had an apostle and they continued in his doctrine. Now, I want to, do you know my doctrine? Me, Pastor Pascal, do you know the things I believe? Are you into my doctrines? Can you, can you represent the things that stand for somewhere? Have you received enough of it to the degree where you can share it? Oh no, what you do every Sunday morning, you take two seconds a pack, three seconds a pack, and you are out. You are up and running. The crowds enjoyed listening to him. They enjoyed. So until you enjoy listening to somebody, you will never get what they have. If you are enduring it, when you are listening to them, you are, you are questioning, you are listening to them. You see, every time you listen to somebody, you are listening to me, you are criticizing me, you are listening to me, you are backbiting, well, I mean, you are talking back. Everything I'm saying, you talk. I say, you talk. You cannot listen to me for, you will not even finish the message. 
And this is what Satan has done to ensure some of you never get to listen. And the struggle is forever around you. It's a sign of backsliding. You are no more listening to your pastor's messages. You have outgrown your pastor's messages. Your pastor is a lower class. You have higher. You know, today also with the advancement of technology, just by a click, you can access anybody on earth. You can access anybody on earth just by a click. So it's really going to require devotion, <laughs> discipline, focus to believe that what God is saying at ABC concerns you. And that even though there are powerful words all over, the Bible says there were widows across the land and breadth of Israel, but to none of them was the man of God sent than to the widow of Zarephath. The word of God will come specifically for a group of people if that group of people will be in place to receive it. There are needs and there are different types of people around you, but this word might not be for them. It might be just for you. Just for you. I've been pastoring for a number of years now at ABC, and I want to be very honest with you. I have not yet come across a person that has listened to me deep enough to reproduce me. I haven't. Not even one. It's true. It's true. And that, that's, that's the worry of the future. Because I told you, like, what I'm teaching you now, even though you see, by listening to my pastor so much, God starts also speaking to me there and they're like, some of the things, that you might not find them in the book, but they're they are part of the book. It's just because, you see, his voice is with me. So I don't always say what is there, but what I say is just what is there. Yeah. I don't have to dress like him. It's not about the dressing. When Elisha, Elijah asked Elisha, what do you want? Did he say, I want your cloak? Eh? I want your tie. I want a double portion of what? Your spirit. It's the spirit that makes the difference. Yeah. Wow. We're out of time. And I haven't even touched on many things. So look at it again. Number one. No more going to church regularly. No more interest in the word of God as before. No more listening to your pastor's messages. Number four. No more praying. The lack of prayer in your life is a big sign that something has fallen off. Ezekiel 22 verse 3. I search for a man among them who will build up a wall and stand in the gap for me and the land so that I will not destroy it. Guess what? But I found no one. I searched for a man to stand in the gap to pray. I found no one. I found no one. No more praying. I came to search in this house. Is there somebody who is standing in the gap between me and destroying this family, between the devil and destroying this house? I found no one. The doors are down. Everybody is down. In fact, people are even, they don't like it when you pray too much. You know, when you have now reached a stage where you don't like people who pray too much, you have gone far. Because not praying is already a stage. But not liking people who pray. It's another bigger stage. Mm. That when you are in the church, you don't like these people that pray too loud. Like they, they offend you. They irritate you. You don't like, you don't like people. They are too zealous. Hey, they are too zealous. Wow. We are in the church. It's a prayer meeting. 
It's a fire hour. But you are feeling this people is too much fire. Why are you igniting too much fire like that? I mean, we are just here, small, small fire. You want to come here with an entire mountain fire. You're having an attitude towards people who, who pray too much. Look at where Satan has taken you. He has taken you now to the place where you are doing his job. You are intimidating people who pray. God says, I'm looking for somebody to pray. And you don't want people, you don't want to pray. And you don't like, and, and I think it's true. When you don't like something, you don't like people to do it. Oh, yeah. Have you seen the guys? They are struggling with fornication. And the brother comes, the brother wants to be very holy. Do you think they will like that, brother? Hey, they will fight him. They will, oh, like, they will fight him. You want to say you are better than us. And they will desire for him to fall also. But they have not joined the devil in the destruction of the church. Like they are even setting him up to ensure that he also joins them. That's the same thing with prayer. You start desiring for people to not pray. So that they can be like you. Matthew 13 verse 20, 35, 25. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weed among the wheat and left. What you don't know, as we are all sleeping, enemies are coming. And they are sowing wheat, weed in the nice wheat God has been building for us. That's why Jesus told us in Mark 14, 38, keep watching, keep praying, so that you will not come into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh, the flesh, the flesh is weak. The flesh, is, and if we let the flesh run the show, get ready for some serious action. If you let your flesh run the show, I'm tired. I've worked all night. I've worked too much. I'm tired. I can't pray. Oh, let him run the show. The spirit is willing. The flesh is weak. But the spirit is willing. The spirit wants to pray. The flesh says, I don't want to pray. You decide who you're going to listen to. And that decision will determine your life. Mm. I want to end this session by telling you about what Jesus told Peter. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to swift all of you as wheat. In other words, Peter is just enjoying life. He doesn't know. That Satan has gone and made a request against him and everybody else. But how did Jesus manipulate and destroy that? But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. That your faith, your faith, do you know why people backslide? They are not prayed for. You will see people, they are beginning to go off and you can see Satan is placing a demand already on this person. But you are not praying for the person. Only prayer, only prayer can cause the faith of a person to not fail. Prayer. I have prayed for you. Oh, may people be praying for you and may you be praying for some people. May you be praying for your sheep as they have gone on holidays. May you be praying for them. Satan is asking to save them as wheat. May you be praying for your people. May you wake up in the night just like the shepherd on that night and they wake up and they started praying and the Bible says and they saw the heavens open and they saw angels. Do you understand? The day Jesus was born, only shepherds knew he was born because they were watching all night. They were watching all night. They were watching all night so they could see the arrival of the Messiah. I have prayed for you. I have prayed for you that your faith, your faith may not fail. Many people's faith fail because nobody is praying for them. Our children's faith is failing because we are not praying for them. We are not praying for our children. We are taking them to school. We are taking them to the crash. We are taking them to the university. But we are not praying for them. We are not praying for them. One bad friend in that university and your child is gone. All your years of putting money are gone. The child is gone. Only prayer can save. 
at that level. And here you are, you don't come to church, you don't pray, you don't, you don't believe in such things, you see. You don't believe in such things. You believe in hard work. Go ahead. Go ahead. Soon you will see that unless God helps you, you are finished. And God's help is secured through prayer. Through prayer. Through prayer. Sign number five. No more praying in tongues. No more praying in tongues. It's the fifth sign. You are on your way to descending. Tongues are no more coming out of your mouth. And you are not praying in tongues for long hours. Ten minutes. Three minutes. Sign number four is that you are no more praying. Sign number five, you are no more praying in tongues for long hours. It's a sign. It's a sign. We are returning back to hot, hard, ah, mele kalose pele makaya manama, ipele kasokole mende nama, epele menda, epele menda, breto kolo yama, ise pele mene, epele dialoga, pracheke laza, riketeke lama, Prenteke zile, e pretatova, prachala bela, ricate manza, prenteke yama, sokele bea, ayakatoma, prelege dize, pretatolama, yakaya, 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 pele malama, pele malama, antaramene, antaramene, presela bea, Jesus, Jesus, prekeya malaka sokole mandelema, where are your tongues? Where are your tongues? What has happened to your tongues? What has happened to your tongues? Where is the fire? Where is the fire of the spirit? In Jesus' name. Koma Lama Sema. Number six. No more fasting. It's a sign. It's a big sign incapacitated to fast. Matthew 6 verse 16, when you fast. Not if you fast. When you fast. Except for medical reasons, fasting must be a part of your life, brother. And the lack of fasting in your life is a sign your flesh is in charge. Because let me tell you something. Why do we fast? The number one reason why we fast is to put the flesh in its place. If you didn't know. As you are eating, you are giving strength to your body. When you stop eating, your body starts losing strength. And your spirit starts gaining strength. The, the spirit is willing. The flesh is weak. The weaker the flesh, the more willing the spirit We fast to neutralize the flesh. So when you are no more fasting, your flesh is growing stronger and stronger and wilder, wilder. Things you had overcome are back. Because you've been feeding the flesh so well. Watching TV, Watching this, doing this, you have been giving so much food to the flesh that certain things that had been subdued have been revived. They have been revived. They have been revived. When you fast, every religion, even those don't, every religion has fasting because everybody knows that that is where power is. Yeah. Muslims fast, Hindus fast, everybody fast. You should fast. And there's no better time to fast than these days we are in. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Why do we fast? We fast to build humility. Psalm 35 verse 13. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled myself with fasting. I humbled myself with fasting. How do you humble yourself? With fasting. Fasting humbles you. Yeah. When you fast, 
You see, you become calmer. If you really fast, I mean like for real, you will see, you, will, you see, the more you, fast, you start talking less. You humble yourself. Yourself, you see this self, you humble it when you fast. You humble it. It's a way of fighting pride. It's a way of fighting pride. A way of fighting pride. I humbled myself with fasting. Sign number seven. No more fasting for extended periods. See, like you fast, you fast from 6 a.m. until 12. Those are your fastings. From 6 a.m. until 12 a.m. And the people say, no, no, I fasted from 6, I fasted from 6 a.m. until 10 a.m. I mean, that's four solid hours, pastor. Four solid hours. I didn't eat. Yeah. Those are your fastings. No. It's time to fast for extended period of time. I mean, we've been pushing for at least a day every week. You can fast for three days. How about that? By yourself. Father, let me humble this flesh. Let me, let me discipline this flesh. I'm going to fast for three days. Hey! I'm going to fast for seven days. I'm going to fast for 21 days. I'm going to fast for 40 days. Extended, extended, extended to destroy the flesh. And you see, the Bible says, this kind goeth not except through prayer and fasting. You see, if you don't add fasting to the prayer, you are backsliding. Some churches today, you never hear the word fasting in the church. Oh, you can't hear such a word. It's a taboo word. Because on Sunday morning, they give you biscuits and tea and coffee. How can you fast? I will never give you biscuits here at ABC. Your only biscuit will be the Holy Communion and the blood of Jesus. Are you with me? Yeah. Let's get on to fasting. I'm trusting the Lord to revive me in the area of fasting. Yeah. I need help in this area myself. We all need help. Don't wait for 21 days fasting next, 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 uh, next uh, month. Let's start, develop a personal habit. Let me fast for two days by yourself. It's a sign of revival. It's a sign the engine is still working in me. Yeah, but when I'm already having my whole week planned for food, Monday, I'm eating chips. Tuesday, I'm doing rice. Wednesday, I mean, you have a roaster for food. Hey! The whole roaster. No, Pastor, I'm, I'm on diet. What do you mean? What, what are I talking about? I'm on diet. 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 I hope you're also telling demons, I'm on diet. I'm on diet. I'm on diet. I'm on diet. It's going to be on diet. There's no problem. But you see, you must also have time where you say, there's no diet here. There's fasting here now. There's fasting here now. Don't get me wrong. I would like you to be on diet so you can lose weight and get, be healthy. It's fine. It's good. It's good. Sisters, you must look nice. Yeah. Brothers, don't, 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 don't finish us. Exercise. Do what you have to do. Glory be to Jesus. The sister is not marrying a truck. She must marry a Lamborghini. You come here with a truck, a tractor. Go, 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 go. It makes so much noise. It goes this fast. You are a Lamborghini. You are fast. And fasting will help you build speed in the spirit. Give your, put your hands together for Jesus, somebody. 
Let's finish this morning. Hallelujah. I think we're going to continue next week. Amen. Are you blessed? Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Quickly this morning, let us all stand, please. Let's be on our feet. Amen. Right now, I want to pray for somebody that is listening to me. You are not born again. You haven't given your life to Jesus. You've heard me talk about heaven this morning. I told you that we believe in such a place. A place called heaven. Please, if you are listening to me and you are not born again, I would like to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and your Savior. Right now, you are saying, Pastor, I am not born again. I am not saved. Things are not okay in my life. I want Jesus. All right. I would like to pray with you. I would like to lead you in a prayer to help you stand. If that is you saying, Pastor, I want to be born again. I'm going to count up to three. And all I need you to do is to raise your right hand high and I'll pray for you. One, two, three. Raise your right hand. I want you to be born again. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. God bless you. God bless you. You can take your hands down. Well, this morning, if you are listening to me and you are already born again, but you can sense that things are not the way they're supposed to be. Based on the message this morning, you've, you really feel the need to be revived. They need to come back to the heart of worship. To come back to your father this morning. Oh, hallelujah. I want to help you. I believe that God has a word for all of us. This word came for all of us. Now, if you want you to commit your life to Jesus, wherever you are, please don't be shy. Don't be afraid. This is between you and Jesus. This is between you and Jesus. He says, I'm standing at the door of your heart and I'm knocking. If you hear my voice, open, I will come in. All of you that are saying to Jesus this morning, Lord, I open my heart to you. I want you in my life. I'm going to count up to three. If you want to recommit your life to Jesus, I want to help you. One, two, three. Raise your right hand. God bless you. God bless you. What a blessing. Thank you so much. Now you can take your hands down. Now I want us to pray. Because I've been teaching you about prayer. I believe in prayer. I believe there's great power when we pray. Angels are moved and dispatched when we pray. And demons are bound and, and tied up and forbidden from operating when we pray. Doors open when we pray. So please, join us in this prayer from the bottom of your heart. Raise your two hands to the heavens and repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I might be justified. Right now. I believe. My sins are forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored. I'm born again. I am a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Jesus, for receiving me. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody that turned to you this morning. Lord, the same grace that brought them to this mountain caused that grace to sustain them on this mountain all the days of their lives. Father, let every worldliness leave us. Any tie that is pulling us back into the world, back into the wild, let it be cut down in the name of Jesus. Cause us to be established in your house. I give you praise, Lord, that one day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. As they have come, they have come to Mount Zion, the city of the Lord, they shall never look back. Thank you for your precious blood that is washing away their sins, 
Thank you that their names are written right now in the Lamb's book of life. And Lord, we'll be in heaven together with them someday. And right now, as they are on earth, they will live to preach the gospel. They will be mighty men and women of God. They will help build the church. They will help start a branch somewhere. They will get involved in the building of the church, in the establishing of the church, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, once again, I want to congratulate you. We are just two weeks away from the end of the year, and we are getting there stronger. I would like to invite you for our Christmas service this coming 25th. It's going to be in every single branch. Every branch is going to have a Christmas service. And I want to invite you to join us in that branch. God is going to give us a powerful Christmas message this year. And I would like you to be there. Amen. And then for the 31st, our crossover service is going to be a joint service. We are all coming here at Sun City. I would like you to be here. It's going to be star white. Everybody, you can prepare. Start preparing your 2022 offering for the Lord. As you are entering 2022, get an envelope, put in there a seed. As soon as you jump into 2022, you sow a seed. That is the first thing we're going to do. As we jump into the year, we're going to sow a seed. We're going to enter with dancing and seeding. Hallelujah. So it's going to be great. Prepare already for it. We're continuing as usual in the branches. Next year from the 10th to the end of the year is going to be our 21 days of prayer and fasting. Start preparing for it. 21 days from the 10th all the way down. Make sure you join us. Amen. It's going to be a great time. We are receiving our prophetic word for 2022 on the 31st of December. Be prepared for it as well. Amen. Let me tell you something. In our church at ABC, if you are not in the work of ministry, you don't value much. I want to be honest with you. You know why? Because that's what Jesus says, I will build my church. What Jesus is doing is what matters. If you are into building the church, you matter at ABC. But if you are not into building the church, you are not into what our Savior is into. So I want to encourage you. Find a place in God's work. Find a place. Find an area and start a cell. Find a place and say, I want to start a branch here. Build a church. Get involved. Don't wait. You are a woman. It's not a problem. God used a lot of women in the Bible. My wife is busy with a branch in Macharora as we speak. Get, don't stand before Jesus one day and you are empty handed. At least ABC will not be accountable for that. I want to tell you already. So here, you matter as you are involved in the work of God. Not because you dress nice. Dressing nice is good. But dressing nice and saving God is better. It's better. I'm talking to all my children, all of you that are listening to me. Please get involved in God's work. Don't sit and relax. Satan has unleashed all his demons in this December to backslide people, to take people out of the faith. We have to be out there. We have to be out there. Ministering, calling, reaching out, pulling them to church. Don't let them stay at home. Bring them to God's house every Sunday. Hallelujah. May God bless you. Let's share the grace of the Lord together this morning. One, two, let's go. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever amen. amen 2021 my year of preaching the word I will go somewhere I will preach somewhere I will lead someone to Jesus Christ so have Put your hands together for Jesus. See you next Sunday. Bye-bye. Go somewhere. Preach somewhere. Go somewhere. Preach somewhere. Go somewhere. Ooh, preach somewhere. Go somewhere. Preach somewhere.